Greetings gamers, it's Adam with the Rattanon Gratta, finally taking a look at the Atari Lynx, which has been in my opening, but I haven't specifically covered it. Now, of course, my lighting here sucks, being in my arcade. I've got an Atari Lynx Model 2, modified with the McWill LCD with VGA out, and so what I'm going to do is if you push the backlight button, then we can change my inputs. And there we go. Now the sound itself is coming out of the links. Let's see if I can increase that volume any. Um, Battlezone 2000 came out in 1994. The year where the Jaguar was making strides or attempting to. And so here's what the game looks like normally with how it shipped. And as you can see, it looked a lot like the arcade original from 1980. 300 points. Now, as the headline says, you're probably wondering, well, what about the uh, hidden game that's in here? I just needed to show this first. I mean, yeah, I guess it has more detailed resolutions, not <laughs> nearly anywhere near as high as the arcade original. And it fires faster too. It has different types of tanks. And so this was really the only sequel that uh, Atari did on their consoles. I mean, there was ports like on the Atari 2600, which also had to be different. But uh, they later did a sequel on PCs after the Jaguar had failed miserably. And they had wanted to do a uh, a um, Battlezone 2000 port for the Jaguar, but that ended up turning into Hover Strike, also lovingly known as Hover Suck. Um, very, very different as far as how the controls worked and everything. But here is the special hidden game where this is apparently what they intended on releasing in the first place, but for some bizarre reason, somebody decided, well, let's not do that. Let's just have the game that you just saw, the version of the game that you saw there, the vectors and green vectors and all that with different wave-based gameplay. But if uh, when you're in that menu to choose your tank and modify it, you push option twice and then you reset the game and then it will load in the true Battlezone 2000 or, or Battlezone 3D. And from here, uh, you, as you can see, you get it to choose your level, and they all have different terrains. And I believe that this was not finished. That at some point they got along and they're like, "Hey, we're going to do this," and then they decided, "Okay, we're, let's not. We're too scared for some reason. Don't know why." I'll just choose that. And then you get this menu that allows you to adjust stuff. Now, I guess the problem is, is I'm not aware of what the, if there's ever been a kind of a password system or what the instructions are. Okay, here's where we can choose our different types of tanks. Let's try the Gigan or Gigan. I guess it auto loads things in for you, which you might have been able to obtain more stuff to insert into other slots. This is an assumption. And here we go. Here's a completely different version. Now, if you push option one, it allows you to move like this. If you push it again, that's where it allows you independent movement there. But. And where I believe this is unfinished is if you run into anything, including what looks like should be power-ups, they don't absorb, they don't pick up like that. And if you shoot them, too, nothing happens. Oh, I guess this tank doesn't have any fire B thing. So there is one, some of the other tanks have like a laser thing instead of a cannon. 
Let's see if we can find somebody else. You can't go on to the dark gray portion. But this definitely showcases the Lynx abilities a little bit better than the other one, uh, or the other version of it. Is this a bad guy, or is that just a... Okay, I guess it's just a stump or something. There's some bouncy guy. Now you have limited ammo, and where you can't pick anything up, that means you can't reload, which kind of sucks. I'm not seeing any bad guys there. So let's reset, try somewhere else. Let's go to an arid place. Can I change anything about my tank? Because I didn't care for that one. Oh, let me shut it off and turn it back on and see what happens. Or do it again. Okay, just go in, blah, blah, blah. Option twice, and reset. All right. Let's go to Crystal Land. Let's try the Madonna. Sounds good. Okay, I guess we got some enemies there. See, like this should be a pickup, but when I hit it, nothing happens. It just makes it sound like I'm running into it. But the impressive thing about this is the enemies, as you'll see here in a second, are actually rendered in, I believe, 3D polygons. Boom! You're dead. But I can't pick up what you dropped, dang it. Let's see what if I push option one. Nope. All right, what does that do? That was option two, and it looked like it was allowing me to do something, but I guess not. I'm being attacked. Yeah, this bouncy thing, although I don't seem to see any health gauge. But yeah, it's weird to me that they decided not to have the game, like, I guess, how it ended up being the wave-based play, and, but with these types of graphics, or at least offer both. Because obviously the Lynx could handle it. It's just needed some finishing work so that it would be playable. Let's see if we can take out this guy. Yay! We win! Let's try one more level. Crater? I'm sure it'll be all gray. <laughs> yeah. Getting to those guys over there. So yeah, I don't know what you think, but I think this would have made for a good Jaguar title to have been released in 1994. Obviously, the Jaguar could have done this in a graphical sense much with much higher fidelity than the Lynx could. Still impressive, though, for the Lynx. If you're not really familiar with the Lynx, it was 1989 hardware. Actually, been developed back in 87, but took them a couple years to figure out what they were going to do with it. Um, but this was the most powerful handheld of the 90s up until when the Game Boy Advance came out, which actually I think that was 2001, right? Somebody can probably correct me if I'm wrong there. But it's sprite scaling capabilities plus its 3D abilities for 
pretty darn impressive and it could just do a lot of color on the screen 4096 to be exact I know I saw another enemy somewhere but no, oh, all right maybe not anyways yeah another weird decision by Atari uh, on the links is I don't know how well Battlezone 2000 might have sold but it seems like had it at least allowed you uh, had they finished this and allowed you to access it it might have done better or should have done that plus releasing it on the Jaguar with more flat shaded 3D stuff or would have been a great launch title but that's my opinion what do you think let me know in the comments and also let me know if there's anything else from the Atari Lynx that you want to see and we'll catch you on the next video